Alright, welcome back once again everyone. This is Sai Soldier, and we are continuing where we left off. Uh, looking here, I need to set this guy to research. Check out my research and see how that is going. I am doing 76 per turn, and I need just a few more to get my Dark Knowledge. Use Celestial Hounds. Now one thing that might be worth pointing out about Tian Chi's uh, Celestial Summons is the fact that I believe they are all sacred. So they will all uh, benefit from my uh, blessing that I have. So this one, the Celestial Soldier, is a being of the Celestial Sphere. A horseman in full scale armor armed with a glaive. To be honest, I haven't used many of the uh, s celestial summons. In fact, I have not used any of the new spells for Dominions 4. So I'm not particularly familiar with how those are uh, going to be. Uh, let's go ahead and well, let's check out the statistics and see how this is going. Score graphs, provinces, where am I at? I am still somewhere in the mid-range for provinces. Uh, Magartha, my ally, is number three. Abyssia is doing quite well. Uh, who's that? Utgard is doing uh, pretty well as well. And I guess that might be... Uh, Atlantis is in the lead uh, along with uh, Utgard. So for uh, forts, I think everyone is still the same on forts. Income, my income has uh, begun to recover from that uh, random event I suffered in the beginning. Uh, gym income, looks like I'm still pretty much uh, tied with everyone there. Research, I am still at the bottom of the pack, along with, I guess that's probably man. Yeah, Man and I are bringing up the rear in that area. Dominion, I am somewhere in the middle. Army size, um, doing better than Abyssia. Regardless, I'm not too concerned about that graft because I know that uh, what troops I have are worth far more than any troops that uh, my enemies may have. I'm going to plop down... Uh, fair bit of uh, province defense here. How many units? Does he? He's got about 20 units there. Uh, the province defense I just placed there, that should do a pretty good job of fending him off. So I don't think I have to worry about him cutting me off as I move to take that province. Recruitment. Uh, I'll go ahead and recruit another one of those. And unfortunately, I can only get uh, another two ancestor vessels after plopping down the money for the uh, province defense there. But it's probably worth it. Let's go ahead and uh, see how much it's going to cost to construct a. Wow, that's a little on the expensive side, but I could construct a citadel there. Citadel would do admin 35, and the castle is admin 30. Basically what that does, uh, at least according to my old understanding, I don't know if they've changed it for Dominions 4, but uh, you, down, you see down at the bottom where it says admin 35, that would... Uh, more or less increase the income for that province by 35 percent. So uh, building a castle there would increase the gold income for that province uh, by about 70 gold per turn. So it would increase to 70 gold per turn uh, up to about 270 gold. So you can see if I uh, was to build a citadel there it would take uh, it would take about well over uh, 12 turns in order to gain the gold back that I spent on that 
uh, and that is going to be in about seven months after I begin building before I even start to see any return on that. So, yeah, it might be worth it. Over here might be worth a little more, even though it does have less income, just because of the fact that that is slightly more of a bottleneck location. Uh, you do have that, so somebody could actually still go around you. But, uh, yeah. That's something to consider. I may go ahead and build a, a citadel there. But for now, I'm still more interested in pumping out more ancestor vessels. Which I have done all that I can do for this turn. And we are launching our attack on this indie province. Let's get this thing going right about now. A battle in Midland. Looks like uh, Miquelin actually tried to attack the Indy province before I did. He's got a lot of slaves, some uh, eagle warriors, a bunch of uh, those guys. Let's speed things up a bit. Oh, those are slingers. The slingers are pretty worthless. If they're up against somebody that has absolutely no armor, slingers are not terribly bad, but uh, Miklan is actually routing from the Indies, and I am going to take these guys out with no problem whatsoever. So now it is my turn to take out what is left of the Indies, and this is going to go completely differently from uh, Miklan's little attempt against them. They will route soon. I'll probably take a few friendly fire from uh, my archers before that happens, though. Yeah. I may still go ahead and recruit some footmen and just use them as bodyguards for my priests. Rylet is attacking Midgard. So Rylet is now at war with Midgard. But I am going to come up there and I'm going to give them both a lot of trouble. Apparently I was actually mistaken this whole time. I was uh, under the impression that Midgard had giants. They may. But uh, I know Utgard definitely has giants. Either way, they're both uh, some of that Norse-inspired uh, mythological factions. And Ryla is getting their butts handed to them. As I would expect, they're not particularly good on land. None of the water nations are terribly great when it comes to uh, fighting on land provinces. And either way, I'm fairly confident my uh, my army could have annihilated this group there. And Agartha has launched another attack. They've taken over yet another province. They're doing fairly well for themselves. Hmm. Ninety units in that army. I would just send them straight back to uh to my capital and pick up more uh more ancestor vessels. However, I don't believe that if I pop down a some province defense that the province defense would be successful against that army if it attacks. 
That seems to be a fairly sizable indie province right there as well. Plain of perpetual drought. Spreads dominion. The throne must be claimed to gain the following effects. Unfortunately, I cannot claim that yet. Even when I get my uh, pretender, I'm not going to be able to claim it because I cannot teleport as of yet. And in order to teleport, uh, I will have to probably empower an astral and complete some research as well. I will get Conjuration level 3 with the next turn. And I think I am going to, well, Voice of a Spoo, I do want that as well. I would like to have all of the sight searching spells available to me. Uh, the other ones are in Thaumaturgy, and then you have Evocation as well. Uh, you have Augury level 3, and Auspex is a level 4 spell along with no more so those will be uh, ones that I begin to focus on uh, next I believe uh, the question is do I go ahead and get conjuration uh, 3 and 4 or let's just go ahead and skip over to thaumaturgy So I will have two levels of spell research completed with the next turn. I'll set him to research. I will recruit, uh, yeah, let's recruit one of them now, why not? It'll take a couple turns. Go ahead and send the con down there. I am going to go under the assumption that they will attempt to attack. I'll put down 20 province defense there. And I will recruit a few more of my ancestor vessels. How many uh, troops have I got? I've got pretty fair amount of them right there. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and go with that. I can send this con up that way and uh, meet up with that army. And they will become supremely unstoppable at that point. I might still need a few more of my priests in order to uh, bless all of the ancestor vessels. Or I could indeed just uh, send some spirit masters or ancestor guides. They do have a map move of two. And they can do some cool stuff in battle as well. So, I may actually go that route. Let's forget about him. Let's go ahead and go with another uh, ancestor guide. And we will end our turn. I don't really need to patrol the province or anything, but I'm going to. There is a little bit of unrest there, so if I patrol, that's going to wipe out what unrest there is still. I've still got 25 province defense there. He's got 40 warriors there, possibly. He could potentially take that province. But, uh, we're going to go ahead and go with this. And hopefully he attacks. Um, who is this? Can't she is attacking Midyard? Ah, uh, they discovered my spy. Yeah, 
We'll skip that. That's going to be uh, over quite quickly. Uh, Gartha has uh, taken over yet another province. Oh. Interesting. Who is this? The Netter of Kings. Did Agartha actually win this battle? Looking at all that, I would say he probably did. He's up against a bunch of cavemen. This is one of the more interesting battles that we've seen. Oh yeah. His crossbowmen are taking him out. Bunch of clay men. I'm not a hundred percent convinced that Garth is going to win this battle. What are those things? Cave grubs. Interesting. Yeah, he should be able to win. Oh yeah. The Netter of Kings is running away. He had no magic items on him. So it's not a horrible loss that they didn't kill him. Excellent. It would appear that Agartha can now claim that throne and honor me, his pretender god. And that is over. Excellent. I would like to actually know where his uh, disciple is located. Mictalan may actually not attempt to attack me. With that being the case, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, begin the journey back towards the capital. I may plop down a few more uh, province defense there. Put 30 in. I don't really want to spend the gold for 30 there, but we'll do it anyways. If they try to attack me with a uh, mediocre, weak force, they are going to encounter a few problems. Otherwise, I just wasted some gold. But I would like to keep this uh, gold-producing province here. That is somewhat important for my strategy, as my gold income is now at 1,031 per turn. So, we will go ahead and go to Army Setup. We will move all of my Ancestor Vessels into the Khan's Army, along with the Footmen. We will set the Khan back to the rear. We will set our ancestor vessels to fire and keep distance on the closest enemy. We will set our footmen. Actually, we will divide our footmen up. We will put five of them on here and set them to uh, guard commander. We'll find what other useful units we have. Uh, da -da -da -da. Ancestor Smith. I don't know that I have any useful buffs actually researched uh, that would come in handy. We'll set uh, the Ancestor Guide here. What was his name? I've already forgotten. Yes. Len Kalhi. He will cast a uh,
blessing. Blessing. Air shield. And I will have him cast blessing again. And uh, do you need a? Uh, you do need air gems to use that one. We'll do some ancestor summoning, and we will stay behind troops. Make sure that he is uh, located in the rear. Set them to uh, guard commander. Actually, let's go ahead and move him further up here. That way we can make sure that we hit some of our ancestor vessels with the blessing. Because it would be unfortunate to actually not bless them. We will use another ancestor guide here. And for him we will do the same. Blessing blessing let's go with an air shield and a, another blessing and we will do stay behind troops stay behind troops they should uh, cast spells fire missile weapons and if unable or if unable to do so tries to place himself behind the rearmost unit on the battlefield. So the spirit master uh yeah what the heck let's send him to No, I prefer to send this guy with the uh earth spells. He can summon earth power, which is useful as it does give him reinvigoration and uh, if you don't know what reinvigoration is, every turn that they do something they gain, uh, they gain fatigue and once they hit a certain amount of fatigue they will uh, go unconscious. So summoning earth power increases his earth magic plus it will also give him uh, reinvigoration so that's a pretty good uh, pretty good spell use and we will set them up front just to soak up any arrow fire got him there in there. Let's move him back slightly. Move him back a little more, I think. He does not have air shield, although he does have decent armor. Move him back slightly as well. And we are going to take him, and him, and him, and the con, and we will move there. That way, on the next turn, they can all converge on that province. Assuming I don't have issues arise back here that I have to address. Someone has claimed the throne of fortune in the name of Alua. Recruiting some more of them. And now we will converge everyone 
on that province there. I think that uh, I think Mikulan's going to make an attempt on this province here. I am going to send them back. They've got 160 uh, units there. Yeah, I'm afraid they're going to make an attack on that. There's only uh, 40 heavy infantry, militia, and uh, horse archers there. I should be able to take that out pretty easily with what I have there. We're going to go ahead and end our turn. Our uh, Celestial Master, I believe, should be done with the next turn. And we'll see how this goes. Ah, they did not attack me. Sorry, I had to pause this. I just wanted to see what uh, these little ancestral spirits are. They have one hit point exactly. They are ethereal, floating. Uh, and their attack paralyzes. It sounded like somebody was raising skeletons. I guess that's just the noise it makes when they summon those uh, little spirits. Viewing my research in thaumaturgy. Actually, I did all that to uh, gain dark knowledge and I never actually began using it. Um, and now I believe... There we go. Ritual spell, dark knowledge. Now in Dominions 3, if you hold down Shift and hit M, it will uh, bring up the monthly uh, spellcast for rituals, and so he will continue to repeat the same spell until he is unable to do so, either because he does not have the gems to do so, or I guess in this case there is no location within range of the ritual spell that he can cast Dark Knowledge at. So, and it would automatically uh, target whatever it needs to target. We will set him to research. Were those guys old age? No, they were not. So they are actually not terribly bad. Um, let's go ahead and go with uh, Spirit Master. And yet more of my ancestor vessels. Yeah, I don't. I guess Mickland is not going to uh, try to mess with me. So that's not terribly bad. That means I can go ahead and focus uh, primarily on taking out Midgard and Utgard. Uh, Bizia and Miklan have not officially declared war on me, although we have done battle a few times. Uh, I don't think we are technically at war yet. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we are already doing our recruiting. I kind of want to recruit some more food in. The gold cost is the same for all of them across the board, and I have got resources to spare. So I'm going to go ahead and recruit the uh, slightly more expensive ones. You know what? Forget that. I'm going to go with a strictly barbarian uh, horseman. 
having a few of these guys to uh, throw out a few extra arrows certainly couldn't hurt. The Barbarian Horsemen are excellent units. We'll get back on track here and continue to move towards Midgard. The war against Midgard will begin very shortly. And I am going to place I'm going to pump that up to 40. I do not want to lose that province. That is one of my best provinces and I do not want to lose that. unexpected event. Oh, excellent. A high priest has joined. Please tell me that the uh, high priest... Aha. Well, he did not have uh, three holy, but two holy is certainly not a bad thing. And I can definitely use him to uh, throw down some more blessings. All these guys here, they will uh, make a pretty decent screen for uh, arrow fire and all of that good stuff. I care absolutely nothing about their lives. Uh, let's see here. Blessing. Holy Avenger. Sermon of Courage. Blessing. Sermon of Courage. Stay behind troops. Let's move. Yeah. They should be relatively safe there. We are going to move here. Looking here, I could recruit a priest in that province if I had a temple. So while I am waiting for them to reach that province, I am going to build a temple. I'm going to throw down a few province defense as well, just to discourage Ryla from doing anything stupid. We will set him to research, and we will recruit another... we'll recruit a... Uh, Ancestor Smith. <coughs> I'm going to go for a strictly horse archer army now, I believe. Forget these uh, footmen at this point. I have no need of them because my ancestor vessels are decimating the enemy before they even make it to them. Uh, they're actually quite good against thugs and super combatants as well because uh, they do have the armor negating uh, value when they hit with their bows. And so as long as they hit a super combatant with their bows, it doesn't matter how much uh, armor they've got. They are going to go down. When you've got a hundred ancestor vessels wailing on you with a howling bow, I don't care what super combatant you're using. Uh, they're going to be taking damage. Alright, now I've got a very sizable army here. And it is time to march on and take out Utgard, Midgard, and everybody else we see. We will keep up uh, uh, casting the Dark Knowledge. Hopefully we will uh, find a few uh, death magic sites. Checking on our research. I should be gaining uh, level 3 in uh, Thaumaturgy soon. And then it will be on to Auspex and No More, which are what we are looking for. 
because I do not have anybody with uh, fire two, so I won't be casting that spell. Um, maybe getting close to time to end the video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop it here. Uh, once again, thank you for watching, and we will continue this uh, shortly here with the next video. Uh, have a good day, everybody.